<laughs> oh my God. Misael, you have beautiful legs. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rick and welcome to Sweet Heat. Sweet and Heat are two of my absolute favorite food combinations. Everything that I make, everything that I enjoy eating has some component of it that's sweet and heat. And that's what the show is all about. Every other week, I'm gonna be bringing you another dish that's packed full of sweet and spicy flavors that combined into one amazing dish. I am actually in Mazatlan, Mexico. I'm researching a regional Mexican cookbook. I came here because I heard that the mariscos and the shrimp and the shellfish were really incredible, and they are but I didn't expect to completely fall in love with this place. It's on the Pacific Ocean. The people here are so incredibly friendly. The climate is incredible. So while everybody else is in New York, like dealing with fall and winter, I'm down here on the beach wearing tank tops and Speedos. So we're gonna be filming both around town and here in my kitchen in Mazatlan. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any recipes. So the first dish that I'm gonna make for you today is a mole. Like it is absolutely the quintessential sweet and heat dish. It's also one of the mother sauces in Mexico. It's so incredibly delicious. There are so many different kinds of mole all over the country. The mole that I'm gonna make for you is called mole sencillo, which is a simple mole. So what I've done is kept the traditional mole making methods that you find commonly throughout Mexico. But what I've done is I've pared down the number of ingredients. So this isn't a 54 ingredient mole, it's a 10 ingredient mole. My belief is that if you can master the techniques, you can like basically make any kind of mole after that. So that's what we're gonna do today. Ordinarily, in a mole, you would probably have onion and garlic and maybe others in the allium family. Um, I'm only gonna use one onion. Um, and in addition, some moles take tomatoes, some take tomatillos, some take both. I'm only gonna use a tomato. And so, you know, when I, when I decided to do this recipe, I really wanted to know, honestly, if it was possible to um, make a mole with 10 ingredients because I've only ever made moles with a lot of ingredients. I've only ever eaten uh, moles with lots and lots of ingredients. And so I wasn't actually completely certain that it was possible to get a full mole rich flavor with this few ingredients. This is maybe not necessarily a weeknight mole, but it is something that, you know, is gonna feed like four to six people. So it's like something small and manageable. For that, we're only gonna be using a quarter of an onion. This is one of those recipes that things go really quickly um, when we start charring and frying. Um, so I wanna make sure that I have everything ready to go because once the oil is hot, it can burn really easily. So it's really important to just like jump in there and getting get all the things fried at the same time. I'm also gonna use a scale. I feel like I was really into scale specifically for baking, but when I started actually creating recipes uh, here in Mexico for my regional Mexican cookbook, I discovered that it's equally important to have exact measurements for things like moles as well, because the reality is, is that every chile is different. And so like, for example, this is a chile ancho. Um, it's very fresh. Uh, it's still very pliable. It's almost like very raisiny um, and sweet. Sometimes in the United States, you go to the store and the chile anchos have been sitting on the shelf for maybe a year. And so they get really hard and brittle. Um, they lose a lot of their flavor, they lose a lot of their potency, and they also weigh less. And so if I tell you to buy six chili anchos, your six chili anchos are gonna weigh a lot less than my six chili anchos. So I think it's just, it's better for both of us, <laughs> for, uh, for my dish, and also to make sure that you get the, the mole that I want you to, to get um, by weighing out your ingredients. With anchos, you wanna take out the seeds and the stem. And for me, the seeds are a little bit larger and a little bit more woody than say, for example, a chile serrano or a jalapeno. And they develop some tannic flavor. So if you just processed this and made your mole with this, it would develop uh, you know, a slightly bitter aftertaste. And that's it. Okay, great. So next thing I'm gonna do is the animal crackers. So these are just you know normal animal crackers that we probably all ate when we were kids. 
um, and they're a very common ingredient in mullet. What this does is it actually helps to thicken the mullet and it gives it a little bit of body and it also balances out um, the bridge between the sweet and the heat. So I'm putting a third of a cup, which is 22 grams. Wow, that was exactly 22. That was easy. Okay, um, next I'm doing raisins. I'm using 35 grams of raisins, which is a quarter of a cup. So I'm gonna tear out my scale and all right. I think that raisins and anchos just pair so well together. And I've actually, like in a, in a lot of other recipes or you know, anytime that I'm using uh, chili ancho to make a sauce, I actually like to put a little bit of raisins in it uh, just because it, it balances out that heat and they just play so well together because they, they actually share so many of the same flavors. And so every mole has a nut component to it as well. I just really like the flavor of almonds. 40 grams of almonds, quarter cup, boom. Okay, and sesame seeds. These are raw sesame seeds. Um, this is almost a universal ingredient, or at least in all the moles that I found, almost every single one of them has at least a tablespoon, if not more of sesame seeds. And that's what I just put in there. And not the last thing, but the last of these ingredients, star anise. So one star anise. All right, so now we had the heat. Here is the sweet. This is piloncillo, um, and these are two different varieties, but normally, at least the way that I've seen it, it either comes in a cone or in, I guess, some sort of little pyramid-y type shape. Um, piloncillo is unprocessed uh, raw sugar. It's actually in the processing facilities. Um, they collect all the molasses and all the sugar um, that basically that comes out of the processing process, and they let it crystallize into this. So this is the brown sugar of Mexico, and I will continue carefully cutting bits off. All right, yeah, that is that is good. Yep, cool. Oh, it smells so good. Actually, it tastes really good too. I am sugar, ma'am. Mm, that's yummy. Okay, so everything's me. Now we're ready to get cooking. Everybody, this is this is what a kamal is. Um, this is cast iron. I actually also have some uh, ceramic or clay uh, comales. A comal is what is traditionally used in Mexico to toast spices, toast chiles, to uh, to char uh, tomatoes and onions. I'm going to put uh, my tomato and my onion down, and it's going to take, depending on your skillet and your flame, between like four to five minutes, and then we'll turn it. We want to see black. You wanna see really, really dark spots. Um, also, this is the point where you need to turn on your vent or open all the windows in your house because it will get smoky. No, 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 don't open that because we'll get flies in here and mosquitoes and it'll be horrible. We're just gonna smoke ourselves out. It's gonna be fun. Not that I have that done. Well, you know, right. <laughs> it's not that kind of show. <laughs> Making mole. Is that better? No, just like other behind things. it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> wow, some people are so picky. Well, wow. do you want a good job or do you want a, a just a decent job? You know, you just take your pictures and be quiet. How's that? <laughs> All right, so this is what we're looking for nice and charred. And same with the tomato, it's really, really nicely charred. I'm going to move this off to the side and we will start our frying. So I'm going to turn this pot on. So I'm using a large saucepan. Normally when I make moles, I'm used to making, you know, enough for an army of people. This, like I said, is going to be four to six people. So I just need a saucepan. Um, so I'm going to use lard, A, because I love lard, uh, but it just adds a lot of flavor that I really like. And it's not like you're going to be tasting pork necessarily but it's gonna give a nice umami, a little bit of a caramelization. You can use a neutral oil, canola or vegetable, um, or you can, I wouldn't use an olive oil because the smoke point is gonna be a little bit low and we're gonna fry these ingredients on really high heat. So you want something that is gonna take quite a bit of heat. I'm eyeballing this. I'm going to put three tablespoons in there. 
So I'm gonna do a couple of chiles at a time and this process goes really fast. So once you start, make sure you have everything ready to go and then just go. So I am just going to toss the chiles in the fat, make sure they're completely nice and coated. It shouldn't take more than 30 to 45 seconds. Next, I'm going to add the animal crackers. I'm gonna pull these out. And now everything else goes in. And this you wanna to toss until your raisins, weirdly, will kind of puff up and get lighter in color. The almonds will go a little bit darker. You can start to smell the anise and then the sesame seeds are gonna start popping. And, oh, I don't know if you heard that. I heard that, that is a sesame seed popping. It's sort of like popcorn. Okay, so now everything goes back into the pot. So this is everything that we fried plus the tomato and the onion. And I have four cups of water. This is a tablespoon of the delicious piloncillo. That goes in. And two tablespoons of kosher salt. I'm gonna cover and we're gonna simmer this for 30 minutes. I know that this is a really large blender so I can fit everything at once, but if you have a slightly smaller blender, you can blend in batches if you need to. All right, and that's most of the big stuff. So I think I'm just gonna pour the rest it in. All right, start at the very lowest speed of your blender and and then just let it run a little bit, like let it start to break things down. And then you can start to gradually increase the speed. And I'll just take it all the way to high. And I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes. All right. This is beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you missed a big puff of steam. Okay. Nice and steamy. Mm. Smells so good. Oh, wow. Okay. So it looks very red and it will look red until we fry it. Some recipes call for you to strain this uh, through a fine mesh strainer. I'm like, meh. I mean, the way that mole was traditionally made, it was ground um, on volcanic rock. And so you're going to have like little bits and pieces of, of chile and almond and, and seeds in there. So I don't feel like it's necessary to strain it. Now what we're gonna do is the second fry. This is the last two tablespoons of the lard. I'm going to drop that in. Same thing as before, I want it to be super hot, which you can hear it is. And then for this step, you wanna stand back because this is gonna actually splatter out um, and you don't wanna like get burnt. So stand back. And then just pour the whole thing in. And that is exactly what it is supposed to do. Make a big mess all over your kitchen, which I will happily clean later. Reduce the heat a little bit and give it a little stir and that'll calm it down. This is a little bit of an annoying part because you do have to actually stand here and stir fairly constantly. I've got the heat on medium, medium, low. And then at the very end, we're gonna add my favorite ingredient, chocolate. It smells so good. Thank you. Um, I, I, I was talking to the mole, not to you. You know what, I'm also covered in mole, so actually I smell good too. Um, that's questionable. Shut up. It's been about 10 minutes and you can see like how beautiful and silky and smooth the mole is. And this is exactly what you want. It should be really thick, a little bit thicker than heavy cream and it will have gotten darker. So now it looks kind of like really dark brown with a little bit of red in it. And it's about to get a little darker because I'm going to add some chocolate. Um, so there's a state in Mexico that has what I think is the best chocolate, it's Tabasco. And I visited a few farms in Tabasco uh, last year and really, really fell in love, both with the 
the countryside, but also the farms and then the amazing chocolate that grows there. And so this chocolate is from one of the farms in Tabasco. And I like to use their chocolate um, for mole because, you know, it's Mexican chocolate and we're making a Mexican dish. So no need to chop anything. I'm just gonna break them up in little pieces. I'm gonna turn the fire off and the chocolate will slowly melt on its own. And you'll see it'll get really, really, really nice and dark and silky smooth. All right, so now all of the chocolate is melted and it is done. It's time to plate. Arroz a la mexicana. Got some beautifully roasted chicken. Now my mole. Okay, I'm so excited about this. Oh my God. I was gonna take a little bite, but you know, f it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my God. And it's exactly what I want in a mole, but also just in a dish that I would generally love. You get like a little sharpness from the, the ancho and then it just kind of mellows out with like the star anise and then a little bit of the sweetness, a little bit of the chocolatiness. And it's just so velvety smooth. It goes so well with this chicken, but honestly, I could probably put this on a tire and it would be delicious. Oh, I was gonna get, dip a tortilla in there, but um, actually I think I'm gonna have another piece of the chicken. I hope that you make this. I hope that this was not a, an intimidating mole recipe. I know there are a lot of mole recipes out there that have a lot of steps and a lot of ingredients. I want you to try this because I am convinced that if you make this recipe, it's super easy. If you can master the techniques, you can make one of those crazy moles and you'll be totally fine. And plus, this is actually just a really delicious mole with 10 ingredients. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can follow all the recipes um, twice a month. And uh, I'll see you next time. That frying of chiles is, is such a Mexican childhood staple. It's like your mom's homemade tear gas. <laughs> you, know, you know your mom's making salsa when you start to uncontrollably coughing. Ha 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 ha.